Welcome back, coaches, as we talk about bringing the swag to the offensive line. We're in for part three of this series on the offensive line and how you can bring swag as a coach to your position group. Um, the first episode, we talked about why it was important to have swag. Second episode, we talked about how we create swag from a team identity and just sort of how we do that. And today, part three, we're going to talk about attitude and recruitment and how those work hand in hand. Okay. Now, speaking about attitude, I think attitude comes back to a sense of coaching. This is how you create swag within your position group. I use the term when we were talking about team identity, you can treat it like a plant. You can ignore it and hope it stays alive and eventually it's going to wither and die. Or you can water it and you can foster it. So how do you want your offensive line to play? Don't think, you know, in a technical sense term, we speak in a lot of technicalities here on Bigs Rule the World. Um, we speak about specific steps, all that type of stuff. Think about how you want your offensive line to be defined in a broader sense. Um, for our guys, I want to be defined by our competitiveness, okay? I want to be defined by our competitive fire. So what does that mean I'm doing in the offensive line room? I'm getting competitive in everything we do. So what did I do as a head coach and a position coach? Um, this will be my first season coming up here in the future on just being a varsity position coach. But what did I do previously? Well, we tracked stats. You know, we watched film. I tracked highlights for guys. I wanted them to finish with knockdown blocks. Um, you know, you can't. I wanted them to finish the plate. I would grade my guys out, and my guys would literally text me on Saturday, you got grades done yet? You got pancakes done yet? You got knockdown blocks yet? Um, and we would grade each other on that, and we sort of had competition within that. We bred competition within our linemen drills with just competitive-type drills, whether we were putting guys up on the boards against one another, whether we were seeing who could win, you know, we, who could win one-on-ones, and we do one-on-ones weekly and stuff like that, and we would track stats of that. I like tracking stats of who wins in the who wins up in the practice room. I like tracking stats of who's the lineman of the week up in the, up in the locker room. I like tracking, you know, that with helmet stickers, stuff we talked about in the team identity video. We talked about giving rewards out to guys. So, yeah, so we're creating this idea that competition – is a big thing in our offensive line room because I think a lot of times you're getting five guys who necessarily don't get enough of their competitive sides fostered, if that makes sense, okay? They're not going to be the ones highlighted on Friday nights, you know, a lot of times when they have a big play made. They're not going to be the ones that get, pull, get their huddle highlight pulled up on Monday when you're going over film for a play of the week. So highlight your big guys – Highlight your blocks of the week. Highlight your top five plays of the week. Grade your guys. Camera going awry right there. Highlight those types of guys, okay? Give rewards. I did helmet stickers. Joe Daniel talks about he gives out a chicken sandwich each week for the most knockdown blocks in a week, okay? Give out stuff for guys who grade the highest. That's what I did. All right, and the whole time you're, you're creating an attitude. We create an attitude of competitiveness, okay? And as a coach, I think that attitude is really important because it comes from you. How are you coaching your individual drills? Are you coaching with a fire and with the attitude you want your players to come out of? And this goes for all position coaches, not just offensive line. I to pick an offensive line because we tend to be – less more passive aggressive more passive when it comes to our coaching you know we got to get a little fun you know it's a good group of kids to coach I think offensive line for the most part are probably the least diva-ish position on any sports team um 
Now that tends to take, let us dial back a little bit in the competitive phase. And I want us to dial that sucker up. So I'm going to dial it up in practice. I'm going to be high tempo in my offensive line drills. I'm going to be high tempo in every single thing I'm doing. I'm going to choose my vocabulary to what I want to do. Okay. One emphasis that we started doing when I became offensive, when I started coaching offensive line again. Okay. Um, my previous offensive line coach, you know, he was big on basically coaching kids to move their feet and stay in the way. Just stay low, move your feet, you know, stay low, move your feet. And that was just, that was his way of fixing everything. Me, I wanted to emphasize that not only, you know, number one, we're going to be competitive. Number two, we're going to know what we're doing. But once we are competitive and we know what we're doing, I'm teaching guys and challenging guys. I want you to finish with your opponent on his ass. Okay. Now, does the block require for us to do that every time? No. But I wanted to create an attitude in my kids that you're going to put your opponent on his butt as many times as you can. I was a great kid in high school. Never got in trouble. Um, straight A student. My sophomore year, when I really started to click with what offensive line was, I start. I put up. I got this from Chad. Used to be Johnson, then Ocho Cinco, then back to Johnson. Um, he had a chart up in his locker that said, you know, who can block 85 or who can cover 85, and he had a little checklist for what he did. So I drew a checklist and I put it and taped it up in my locker. No kidding. I had practice pancakes and game pancakes. And I would come in after every practice or every game and I'd tally up what I got. I was putting you on your butt as much as possible. I didn't care if you were a scout team dummy. I didn't care if you it was a game. I'm putting you on your butt as much as possible. And back then I was a little 170 pound JV kid. I was I was ready to blow you off the ball. And that's what I focused on. Uh, you got to coach with that type of attitude, guys. If you want that out of your players, you got to coach with that. What does it mean sometimes? The negatives that can come from that type of attitude? Hey, man, they might be a little bit more divish. They might text you about pancakes or knockdown blocks. But what are you going to get? You're going to get some guys that are lighting their ass up to go get that crap in a game. Um, what words are you using with guys, okay? I think, we again, we can be passive. Be aggressive. Be the aggressor on the offensive line. Teach our guys to be the aggressor and coach with that attitude that we're going to reward this type of stuff. Now, how does us all spill over into recruiting? Well, to me, number one, you need to get out of the prototypical mindset of what an offensive lineman is. I've coached at small schools forever. Um, and I think the prototypical person who isn't an offensive line person thinks that, oh, if I have an overweight kid who doesn't, have, you know, if I have a kid who walks in and this is probably a non-PC word to say, is fat, out of shape, you know, we're just going to give him to the offensive line coach. That's who you stick up there. No, you need a little bit of fight in that guy. Okay, bigger guys can be great. Little guys can be great. I think my guys have to be fiery and competitive. Okay, they want to have to win. I've talked before about a guy I coached who we nicknamed him 317 because our original offensive line coach couldn't remember his name. Again, I'd, I'd like to highlight, don't do stupid stuff like that in recruiting. Don't forget kids' name. Learn your kids' names. Even if it's their first day, I'll try to commit yourself. I try to commit myself right now to learning all of my guys. And then I'm trying to learn the whole team. Um, and especially don't call a kid a nickname because of his weight. Not to pick on my old offensive line coach, but that could have really turned out badly. We could have lost that kid. Instead, he loses a ton of weight for us, slims up, becomes a great offensive lineman for us, becomes a state uh, – high school all-star, first one we'd had in 14, 15 years. Um, we risked losing him with some of the ways we recruited him, but I'm glad we were able to get him to stay and push through it and be a great, successful player. 
Um, but, you know, I'm talking about I've had big guys who've been piss poor and I've had big guys who've been great. But to me, they got to have that competitive attitude. Same thing with little guys. I've had little guys. I was an undersized offensive lineman who I think I did a pretty good job. Um, but I was competitive. I'm going to be competitive as hell. My brother was a much bigger guy. You know, I played in high school probably at 220. He played in high school probably at 320. We know what we had in common? We like to put people on their ass. You know, that's what we that's what we got our jollies off on. And we wanted to be competitive with it. So you got to recruit those types of guys. You got to get as good, as competitive as kids as you can put in that offensive line room and you treat them like they're still guys. You treat them like they're important. You treat them with that team identity. You sell, sell, sell the offensive line. You sell, sell, sell yourself as a coach and as a person you want to be around. Because I'm going to tell you this, the offensive linemen spend the most time around their coach out of any position group. Think about it, offensive line coaches, okay? You got individual to work together. You got inside run together. Then when generally when the team goes past Kelly, where are you all at? You're working pass drops together. You're stuck with that offense. That offensive line group is going to be with you 24-7. They don't break away. You got to sell yourself. Sell yourself as a guy that kids want to play for. Sell yourself as the head coach of your position room. That's a big thing I want to speak about right now. Um, and I'll touch on it very briefly. Sell yourself as the head coach of your position room and you can't go wrong. Treat the offensive line like it's your team. And go out and lead them. Emphasize what you want to get. That's why I emphasize finishing on top of a guy or finishing with him on his butt. Create that competitive attitude. Create competition and practice. And I promise you, it's going to go a long, long way to bring swag to the offensive line. Now, we talked about that. I want to talk very briefly. We're excited. We're at 100 subscribers. Uh, go to at football underscore Allen right now, at football underscore Allen. Follow us on Twitter. We have a Twitter poll going. My next episode, we're done with the swag series. We're going to get into some drill tape here in a few episodes. But I want to do something, uh, something to celebrate 100 subs. So I want you to go take a look at that one. Uh, take a look at our poll on Twitter. Cast your vote for it. And we'll see what our 100 sub video is going to be on Tuesday. Um, for our guys, we're still pushing. Get our subs out. I want you to hit the subscribe button underneath. We want more than 100 subs. I got something very special I'm going to announce on the 100 sub video. I'm going to be playing around with how to launch it. To, uh, how to launch it. Um, but something where you can sign up and get an extra benefit for following Big Drew the World because I want to keep putting content out to you. I want to keep uh, keep y'all involved. I want to stay involved with football. I want to stay involved with getting the content generated. Um, it's going to be a long time. It's the first fall I've had in 18 years where I don't have a game as either player or coach. Uh, in Virginia, we're looking at the best case scenario being spring football. So we'll see how that's going to be. That's actually one of our options on our Twitter poll is you can hear me talk about spring football and how you're going to adjust that as an offensive line coach. Um, but, you know, I want to keep putting out great content for you all the time. And I'm excited about doing it. I'm excited for 100 subscribers in just 12 episodes. Now on to episode 13. Thank you all. I appreciate it. And remember, guys, okay? We're bringing swag to the offensive line. You know why? Because you want to score points. You want to win games. And to do that, you got to dominate the trenches. And to do that, you got to realize and you got to know that Big Drew of the World. Thank you, coaches. Hit subscribe to Big Drew of the World. Follow us at football underscore Allen. See you next time, coaches.